Hello and welcome to episode 157 of the Talking Wednesday podcast. James and Jack joining you this week. Talking about everything Sheffield Wednesday and the gap is still three points. That was the title of the episode of something very similar last week, but it still remains that way because the other teams around Sheffield Wednesday won't stop winning, but we can do nothing but worry about ourselves. I can't imagine it's going to be a specifically long podcast today. Um, I will be streaming Dexterity Watch tomorrow night on the channel for the Plymouth game, and then I'm also going to be doing a stream, or we're going to be doing a podcast on the Friday with the Leeds game. Made the decision it's two home games. It'd be nice to go to them, but especially the Leeds game, but it's one of those things that made the decision this week because I'm doing quite a bit of work away. Um, I'm going to get back late anyway, so I'm going to come and stream it on the channel. So if you are a broad viewer or you're not going to the game or anything like that, we can we can watch those games together this week. Jack, how's your week yes. been? It's been okay. Just uh, just a couple of stressful last minute bills that have hit me, and I've been kind of spiraling mentally a bit about that. But um, I've studied the ship again and and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I decided I decided at the same time uh, as that was happening to watch a series that I've been recommended, uh, and it's absolutely emotionally destroyed me. Like it's one of those that I literally. You, you know, you stew over for like weeks afterwards and still get flashbacks to the the plot line of the show, and it like really just emotionally rocks you to your core. It's that show called One Day on Netflix. Uh, All right, I got okay. recommended. I've not and I've just I, like honestly, it's. I, I don't get that for a long time. I get that sort of like yeah. I can I can watch series, and then when I'm in the in the evening after, I can feel yes. a little bit like away from a detached yes. sort of like whoa i don't feel right because that set put me in an uneasy place sort of thing mm. but, uh, that's how i felt but for a, a, a good week rather than just an evening oh man Jesus. but yes and uh you was yeah you were saying about the uh the gap of three points it's always nice and fun and 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 great when the gap's quite tight like that isn't it yes as you were as you were saying earlier but um i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry but Yes, it's been okay. It's been okay. How's how's your week been, James? Um, it's been this week. This do you know? I have to process it every time. I have to think about what's just happened. It was quite busy in the middle of it, actually. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, I can't believe I've just said that with a straight face. The busy thing, and you've not even commented on it. It was. Um, oh, I was just. I was just. I was just waiting. You're used it's to it because now. I always make a comment. I always make a comment, and I just wanted yeah. to stay silent this time, just to, just to unnerve you a little bit, just because it's funny, just just watching you squirm. No, uh, but I got my eye sorted well. out. Um, oh. so I've been moaning the past couple of weeks about how my prescription was wrong. My prescription wasn't wrong. The way they lined my prescription up was wrong. So my eyes just weren't properly focusing the right way. So uh -huh. now I'm fine and I can see and it very well and it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, I did that. Had a had a subway for the first time in a while. Hashtag not sponsored. Wow. Wow. Other sandwich brands are available, of course. Exactly. You I love a good like foot long, don't you, James? Oh, yeah. <sighs> You love a good say. You love a good six inch. People well, with their children. Do. I bet you do. I mean, boy. it's not for kids. But but look, I'm talking about sandwiches, guys. Come on, come on now. Get your minds out the gutter, especially you, James. Oh, there's people watching it with the yes, and they probably want a sandwich now, don't they? I bet they do. <laughs> What's your go-to subway? My go-to subway is the uh, chicken and bacon melt. Love a good. One of them with, with yeah, didn't that used to be well. the the subway melt? Yeah, so it they used to be called it, and they stopped. It. Yeah, because it used to be bacon, chicken, and ham, wasn't it? Yes, and yes. then they stopped doing it. And yes. I I used to have that all the time, mm. and now I have to I get the BMT instead. Ew. Yeah. Forgot. What is the BMT again? What what's in the BMT? I've forgotten. Or is it not the BMT? I mean, it's I've not been to Subway in forever, so... It's the one that's got, like, salami, turkey, I don't know. 
I don't know, no. to be honest. It's, mm. it's, it's nice, and then it's just filled with salad and hot okay. sauce. And they stopped doing hot chili. They, I think they used to do like a sriracha mix. They just they have stopped quite a lot, but then they've added like chicken bites and cheese bites and different mm. things. Yeah, it was interesting. Interesting. But with everything quite expensive at the minute, like Mackey's costs a fortune. Subway costs a fortune. You can't have a meal under like a tenner, not a substantial, yeah. which is appalling, really. But, but Mackey, you've got, got the rewards the breakfast app. Breakfast wrap after like four years. Yeah, ah. and they've got the they've so, got the rewards yeah. app as well, which mm. is which is a good way of getting me to get an app because you give me free food and it's like. Mm. I used to go free to food. McDonald's all the time during the Monopoly stuff because of the free stuff. <laughs> I remember once I actually got like a I got a drink from during the Monopoly era. One one time of uh, of the McDonald's stuff, and I, I just threw the like cup away. And I remember there was some kid that was having an existential crisis, just watching me throw this like styrofoam cup in the bin because I hadn't peeled off my Monopoly sticker. <laughs> he just went full. Well, that's probably why some of the biggest. <laughs> that's why some of the biggest things, the biggest prizes, don't get claimed because they're in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is great marketing, really, isn't it? Mm. So, um, it's a bit no, like why, uh, Wednesday's marketing for most things, to be honest. But there we go, just to make it topical. <laughs> yeah, let's. But, we will yeah. get into. We don't need to. This is the ramp section. The ramp yeah, section yeah, exactly. Of the, of the podcast, but yes, we've brought you back, and you're in good form by the looks of it. Who needs sponsors? Oh, we've actually when decided on the date for the in-person obliged. stuff. I forgot. To- We've decided on it. Yeah, I've, we've decided on a date for the in-person stuff. Um, oh, so that is okay, coming. Yes. I've just, I've just realised I never told Jack. So hopefully he's not <laughs> doing anything. I need to talk to him at the end of this podcast about that. Um, oh yeah, I think I might be walking my goldfish. Uh, yeah, uh, mm, yeah. No, that's yes. fine. You don't need to be there. To be fair, it'd probably be nicer without you. Okay, I mean, I'm sure there's certain portions of the listeners that are now absolutely just running around for joy in their places that I'm they listen joking. to this podcast. But I know, so am I. I'm just very dry with humour. Okay, I'm I'm very subtle with my sarcasm. But there, there there is there is probably a few that go, thank God. Yeah, yeah, the the, the ones that don't enjoy energetic scrappy do types of young whippersnappers that I don't know. I, I'm just. Should we move point, into the Sheffield so, Wednesday yes. stuff, Jack? I think we should. Before you pull out that tiniest violin. Um, <laughs> Sheffield yes. Wednesday have played Rotherham this week, and I thought it could <clears throat> be a typical Sheffield Wednesday thing, and it felt like it was going that way in the first half, but Sheffield mm. Wednesday come out on top. Talk to me about yes. your thoughts about this game, Jack. It, effectively, we absolutely murdered them for 90 minutes. And, well, I say 90 minutes, it's more like 65, because they did have a bit of a, a, a period in the second half where they were very good at, you know, countering us and whatnot. And we held on very well in that little uh, period of pressure. But we effectively threw the kitchen sink at it and only managed to come out with a 1-0 win when it arguably could have. And if you look at the table in terms of go- goal difference, it probably should have been a lot more than 1-0. Um, but it was a fine, very, very deft finish again from E.K. Ugbo, who just can't stop scoring at the moment. Uh, and an assist by Dominic Iorfa, from of all Iorfa. people, on his, yeah. on his, on his return yeah. f- from injury. So, yeah, and all the players seem to be like properly now buying into the whole system and the way that we're going about things. It doesn't seem like they're confused about the new um, tactical approaches or anything like that. It seems like the team's actually on board with it all now. Um, and the teething period of, you know, Cisco to this is now kind of finished. Um, so that's very nice. That, that seems very nice to see. Icky Ugbo uh, is just a proper was a very, scorer. He's a yeah. proper poacher. Like, there's so many signs. I remember, like, watching, watching him during the game. There's so many similarities to him and Gary Hooper. And it, and it feels like we've got a Gary Hooper-esque striker back again with, like, his techniques and... and, and the way that he runs off the ball and that sort of thing, and the way he even finishes it's, as well. It's, it's the it's the, su- it's the subtlety in his attack position and everything. Yeah. He's a very he's a very clever mover. He moves yeah. smart. It's like yeah. 
some of the best people say like uh, you know like Messi always says like you should walk and you should read the game and and mm. just he he seems to read the game in the box and know where to be gets into the box at the right time yeah and he could have had a couple himself in that game it's um mm. it's it's one of those things where I think as a fan base, we're prepping ourselves to lose like Danny Roll, lose Ugbo, lose Pervader and things like that. But it's one of those, I genuinely don't think, if you look at like the reception Danny Roll got at the um, Barry Bannon evening last oh, night. Oh, yeah. At the time of recording this. Um, Danny Roll will, pro- will go on to bigger, you know, I think he'll go to the top jobs, but I think, and I think it's very true what is has been said on t- Twitter about it. He won't have the love like he's had here because unless he achieves great yeah. things and does a clop, I don't think he'd ever get that with this family. If you think about how much we back Steve Bruce and stuff like that, mm. Danny Rull is somebody we've got fully behind, and yeah. we could really we could build something with him. That's mm. the thing. It, it, it there's there's potential there to be built. The fact that he's brought in like Paveda and Ugbo, Ugbo was. Clearly, because he's actually become a better signing than Pervader because Ugbo yeah. is just exactly what we needed. Exactly, his goal return is crazy but yeah. for how many games he's played, and what he just it? can't stop six, scoring. Six and in five games, pretty much now, I think it's something like that, isn't it? Um, six in five games along those lines. I'll get that exact. Was... I'll get those exact stops. That's up actually. But carry on. Hmm. Yeah, and although it's six I, in I eight, I thought it was. I feel like six in eight. I feel like we need to. We need to talk up Pervader a bit more because what a player he... Well, no, we don't because if we talk him up too much, he'll sod in, he'll go off to another club, won't he? Like, that's just the sod law. But I think Pervader's um, been talked up a lot. I think, I, think yeah. I still stand by the fact what we need from him is we need end product. But oh, yeah. um, that's me trying to be the critical sort of like, Pervader, you stay and you can work on your end product yes. here and you're yes. not the finished article and, you know. Oh, he's far from it, to be honest with... I think he's, how old is Pervader? I think he's only like 23, isn't he, Pervader? Uh, I'll just quickly Google, but... Uh, well, Ugbo's like at he, that age where... Yeah, 24. He's, yeah, and Ugbo's 25, I believe, so... I'm the same age as EK Ugbo, and I'm sat here and he's playing for Sheffield Wednesday, for God's sake. Oh, anyway. It only yeah. gets worse, that, oh, mate. <laughs> Jesus. That I only gets I worse. Like, people I went to school with... Gr- getting engaged, getting getting their own houses, friggin' getting getting married, having babies, like, and now that oh, anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. a couple of years off now. Yeah. Where you'd look on Football Manager and go, oh well, I'm not going to have him for long, am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, to oh, be I fair, feel. like, hmm. like there is there's people like well into their thirties fitter than I am. I I'm trying to get fit again. <laughs> Um, but it's one of those things, isn't it? It's... Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, I feel old now. Ug- but yes, uh, Ug- <laughs> what you did, you, honestly, mate. I honestly, just... mate. It, it's it's not for the, twi- the, the, the 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 dragged out twenties. I I don't feel yeah. like we're gonna feel old, and then you hit thirties, and then. Jake's old. We'll call Jake old. Jake's but old. Jake's old. There's good. There's gonna be like in like five years or something. I've seen what I've seen what he's had delivered to his house recently. He's an old man. Um, he, he, <laughs> I won't share it on air. But no, I didn't watching. know Ann Summers delivered to be I honest. Know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> his house could be perfect as a care home now. Um, but yes. Uh, <laughs> I know he's listening and watching, and I hope he's enjoyed that. But yes, uh, he's he's the old man of this brigade. That's his role that he fits in very nicely, and we'll we'll keep it that way for as long as humanly possible, please. Well, as long um, as he's around, we're always going to yes. be younger. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then if he's not, you're the whipper, you're the uh, old man, and I'm the the the. Ooh, he's an actor rather than ooh, he's a musician. That'll be the the, the next dynamic, won't it? If uh... <laughs> actors a bit of a stretch. How is the music, Jack? by the way, James? Uh, How is the music? Uh, Where is it? Do you know what, mate? Is this the I end? I was actually gonna of no, 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 no. no um, I was actually. Oh gonna my god, are we getting stop. a live announcement right now? Is this a breakout I, of live announcement? No, I you? was. Oh my god, no! I've just. Oh, you're letting the people my down, James. For Where is it? Sake. 
<laughs> I was gonna start writing again today. That was the Ooh. plan. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> I think I'm your one monthly listener on Spotify, by the way, which is That's really fine. funny. That's fine. <laughs> it's Listen not my bread and butter, is it? Spotify people. The band, he the needs band's more music, than one monthly listener. The, the, the band's the band's music is not my bread and butter. The band's music is just um, fun. Oh, um, talking about are, the band, wow, toxic. I write Technical it. Music. It's all my. I write Can't it all. It. I write it all. <laughs> um, for reference, guys, I'm doing a fishing rod reeling in action uh, on the for you audio only listeners. Um, but anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. No, we, we to be honest, I think I think this year we'll we'll try and do a tramline slot again. Hopefully, this time it won't be chucking it down. Because mm. um, that really sort of like made the fringes quite tricky because yes. people were traipsing through weather. Um, so hopefully we do that. I'd like to do that again um, because we've got a quite a good live band together actually now and we can, mm. we can track the synth stuff but we'll have the, the, everything else over the top of it, which, is, which means we can actually play quite a bit of it. Anyway, you've yes. sidetracked me now. Yes. Speaking of tracking things, how about we keep on track with the championship review and talk about was, the other fixtures in the I, league? I was trying, Jack. Championship review. So what a transition, the, uh, by the way. Anyway, God's sake, <laughs> it's too early for this, Jack. I've been up since six o'clock, so I'm like wide awake. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um... I had a take away last night and uh, a few glasses of wine, and I'm I'm feeling oh. a little bit rough today because I should have drank more water before bed. Oh dear, yeah. But there we are. It well, wasn't good are. wine as well because I say because I say good wine, I don't really feel it. But this was I took a risk on a wine, and I regretted it. Ah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. West Brom 2, Coventry 1, Bristol City 0, Cardiff City 1, Huddersfield 1, Leeds 1. Leeds couldn't even do that right. Birmingham 3, Southampton 4, that was cutting it close. Rotherham 0, Sheffield Wednesday 1, Preston 0, Hull City 0, Leicester 1, QPR 2. Leicester can get in the bin. They've not been yeah. helping us at all. Swansea 2, Blackburn 1, Stoke 2, Middlesbrough 0, Norwich 1, Sunderland 0. Millwall 1, Watford 0, Plymouth 0, Ipswich 2. So Millwall 1, I'm just, right, I like Leicester. I think they're a good club. Why yeah. couldn't you have done us a favour there? Because Sheffield Wednesday might have won their last three games, but we are still in 23rd with a three-point gap. This table looks crazy. Rotherham are at the bottom, 19 points. Wednesday, 23rd, 35 points. Stoke, second to bottom. Sorry, third to bottom. I can't count. 22nd is because I was looking at two twos. Yeah. 38 points. Huddersfield, 21st place. 38 points. Birmingham, 20th place. Game in hand, granted. 38 points. QPR, 19th. 38 points. Three points but and off, off all of those. However, if we did get the three points, if we were also on 38 points, our goal difference would keep us where we are. That's the yes. problem we face. 18th, Millwall, 39 points. 17th, Blackburn, 39 points. Plymouth, 16th, 40 points. Which is crazy, because... That, that's just insane. Absolutely insane. <laughs> We're five points off 16th. I was about to swear then, but I won't. But I was literally about to say WTF. That it's just I can't believe we're that close to safety. Never mind like mid table. That that what a, yeah. what a, what a year for the championship this is. Like by the way, this is absolutely in mental. We're and nine also, points off twelve. To it's this is a testament to the to the job that Danny Rill has done since he came in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he's he's pulled it back to this. Like, and it's the same players. The only two he's added, really, that have made a bigger impact than anyone else are Pervader and Ugbo. Like, that's it. Everyone else were last year's signing, uh, last year's players from the Peterborough playoffs. 
and uh, and uh, friggin' Cisco. I actually forgot his name there for a second because he did that good of a job, clearly. Um, and bloody Cisco's signings. So it, it's like the problem we have is our stupid goal difference. But yes, uh, the, the obvious, yeah. the stupid goal difference, mm. and the fact we've got some ridiculous fixtures coming up. Plymouth yes. on the day that you're watching this podcast, I'll try and put it out a little bit earlier on Tuesday, actually, so you can see it before the match. That's going to be a massive game. Um, I'm going to be not enjoying watching that because we need it's a must win because we need yes. to put the pressure on because that will take us to 38 points. Because if we don't win that. The problem is, Leeds might have not been great lately, but we've got Leeds on Friday. Yes. And Leeds will be up for it against us. Mm-hmm. And then I'm actually going, after I'm that, actually going to be in Leeds the day after that particular fixture, so I need to keep shtum about being a Sheffield Wednesday fan, don't I? Yikes. I think um, you're fine. Yeah. You're going to Leeds for? But, uh, it's, just, it's a belated thing for my birthday that my... My friends round near to where I live have all set up. It's doing the Otley Run. Uh, all right, okay. Pump crawl thingamajig. So that's going to be fun. Hopefully they don't all like, oh, it's the Wednesday fan. Oh, yes. Look, everybody. Come and, come and smash his head in because he's a Wednesday fan and he's just beat, you've just been beaten 1 0 by them. <laughs> hey, this, this that's, podcast that's ain't the... that big. <laughs> You'll yeah. be fine. No, I know. I know. Um, Ipswich. After Leeds and then Swansea after that and then Middlesbrough and then QPR. There's so many mm. fixtures that are going to be vital. But the Plymouth one is the one that keeps us... It keeps us fighting, right? Yeah. Because I said, oh, look at all the other fixtures these teams have got. And they beat them. The bloody teams that should have lost this weekend beat them. Yeah. QPR have got West Brom, which is another... They've got QPR. Uh, QPR, sorry. They've got West Brom, Middlesbrough and Sunderland. But given their form... Like, you think, oh, they're not going to get anything out of that. But given their form, they're probably yep. going to win a couple of those. Yeah. I can see them winning the West Brom game, actually. Yeah. And then you've got Millwall, who have got Blackburn tomorrow. So we're going to be watching that one. That's, that's mm. a big one, actually. Because Blackburn are on free fall as well, apparently, aren't they? What's some... uh, yeah, a little yeah. bit, sort of. But they're definitely not in uh, particularly up there sort of uh, form at the minute. And, uh, but I, I just think it's I don't interesting. Want to be talking it. Yeah, um, they, no, it, well, they're on 39 points. I've, Blackburn I've Millwall are, are, are level yeah. on points. They're both on 39 yeah. points. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's an interesting development. And then if you actually look at this, it, these are the next fixtures uh, of the teams just above us um, that they have at the same time that we uh, play Plymouth on Tuesday. Uh, the, the same like, you know, numerical fixture, if you like, um, of the season. So Stoke City are away to Leeds United, which is uh, should be an interesting game. Huddersfield are away at Cardiff. Uh, Birmingham are away at Hull. And QPR, like you've said, are at home to West Brom. All of those games could mean that, yeah, so if, they're where- that if we win against, Pete, uh, against uh, Plymouth, we will then be drawing with them on points. Should they all lose? Yeah, we still won't be out of the relegation zone. But That's the thing because we'll of the be goal level difference with basically everybody yes. above us, other than goal difference. It's very, that is it's very true. But we won't so know vital. where we sit on that. Yes, we won't mm. know where we sit on that until Wednesday because it's worth mentioning the Cardiff Huddersfield game and the QPR West Brom games are on Wednesday, not Tuesday. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be watching a lot of fixtures with that. But if you look at our form, we're sixth in the form table at the minute. Hmm. Which and is mental. Yeah, and the annoying thing is the team that's above us in the form table is bloody QPR, so... <laughs> but the promising that's... thing is, the promising thing is, the teams that are... Let's have a look. Let's have a look <laughs> who's down there that's, that's lower. So Millwall are 19th in the form table, Stoke are 18th, Birmingham are mm. 17th, Blackburn are 15th. You know, they're the teams yeah. we want down there. But QPR being up that high and Huddersfield being in ninth, ideally, mm. isn't ideal. Sorry. No, no. But what's good for us against potentially Plymouth uh, on Tuesday is that they are 22nd in the form table. So the only team that they've actually beaten in their last uh, six is Rotherham, just like us 1-0. So it's... It, yeah. 
it could be it could be like a I forget what the phrase is, but it's like it's of course it's going to be us that they end up beating rather than carrying on their trend of losing in the in the form table. But it's it's a very very exciting close to the season. I mean, I'm saying close to the season. We've got like 13 games left or 12 games left or something like that. But the the end of the end third, if you like, of the season is a very exciting time. And actually, this season in the championship should go down as one of the like best years, I believe. Um, although nobody's going to talk about that because of how far Leicester are and Ipswich are at the top of the table. But this game, this this season, should be talked about as one of the best in. In championship, yeah. History, if if you look at the championship history. last season, we'd have we'd yeah. have been mid table. Oh yeah. Even with yeah. us, it's it's one of those things. The championship, it it was it seemed poor last year, whereas yes. this year it just seems to have stupidly strong. It become was like, ridiculous. It's like it's, yeah. yeah. Oh. Because and as well, our squad. If I was thinking about it the other day, our squad. If we were back in the championship in like 2018, and the squad. At, at their current age, at their current everything, we would have been like top of mid table in that era of the championship with the squad we have. I, the game's I changed sort of though, believe. so that's that's the, the difficult game, thing. Exactly, there. exactly. Yeah. The game has changed and it's gone more to a youthful, pacey, counter pressing sort of approach. And that's where we've fallen short a bit. Because if you actually look at all the games that we've lost, how many goals have been scored against us when we've been hit quickly on the counter? so many of them the open play goals anyway like the not being able to defend corners is another story but um, well the, the problem we've got so is, many is it's a case of and i still don't think how the game is. our players i still don't think our players are cracking i think we've made a couple yeah. of good additions and it's strengthened <laughs> the side you know but i still don't think we've got we don't have. Oh no, Danny's no, working I, without I without top players. He the players he's yeah. brought in have been of a quality that that actually have lifted the rest of the team and shown yeah. that actually those players that we all thought were useless actually aren't useless. Hmm. But they still probably aren't the levels we need to be in the championship. There needs to be more of a blend of the players in there. Oh, I do, and yeah. we've seen that starting. You bring Perveda, you bring Ugbo in there. The one thing that doesn't fully convince me is our defense. Our defence has obviously and, not and, been good yeah. enough this season. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't trying to say that this is like a playoff team or or anything of the sort in the championship. Yeah, I'm no, just I saying know. it's like it it it's also proved to me about how important like uh, this is gonna be such a Alan Partridge statement, but it, it it proves how important the managerial person is because these are the same crop of players, bar like two, Pavedo and Ugbo. Uh that started the season, that started that, that that were in the squad against the first against Southampton in the first game of the season, and that just proves to me like this is the same squad, and yet Danny's getting this tune out of them, and Cisco got whatever the hell that was out of them, you know, yeah. and was doing whatever the hell that job was, um, and it's just it it's it, I'm I'm very excited. I he's not gonna leave. Like, come on, get like sod off if you're saying that Danny Rill's going to leave if we go down whatever else he won't he wants to build something and what does that say about him as a manager if he leaves a team that does get relegated on his first attempt at, at managing everything football Nobody has short really memories though so he, 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 it, it depends yes. it depends the way he goes but at the same what time I want to talk really about excited to see what he builds you know we what? have got an amazing delay today, by the way. We're not being rude to oh, each yeah. other, just so you are yes. aware in the yes. audience. For some reason, halfway through this podcast, we've got about a, probably a good second and a half delay. But carry on. Sorry, Jack. Yeah, I'm just excited when Danny gets a proper summer window, which is when all the key business always happens at every football club, no matter who you are. Um, I'm just really excited to see what he decides to try and build with us because he's got to get back. This is the, this is the thing. With the amount of plaudits he's getting and the amount of positive reception that he's got from like people in the game and, and fans alike, he has to get backed by Chan Siri. There is no way he can that, that Chan Siri can get away with just going, oh no, you've got to do it on the cheap. You've got to do it. Everything is, you know, it's all on freeze. I'm not really gonna give you much at all. There is absolutely no way in hell. He can turn around and do this after how much the fans have taken to Danny Rule and how much the players have bought in 
everything, you know? So you know the first I'm thing I'd do if we stayed up? Do you know that two million that was, that was touted for Duncan oh, Maguire? Yeah. I'd chuck it at Ugbo. Immediately. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, he, I mean, allegedly his price tag might be a bit more like six million, some have said. But, again, we stay up. There's a lot more TV money that gets sent our way next year in terms of broadcasting revenue. But with the books that came out, with the, with the financial figures of, Chris, uh, of uh, Kieran Maguire that came, I was about to say Chris Maguire, what a throwback. But with the financial figures of mm. uh, Kieran Maguire that came out recently, where the hell's that money going to go? Because it, it seems like we're in 132 million pounds of debt. So that's the... That's he the he thing might actually be a six million pound player because I've just looked at his contract. He's, uh, uh, he's got a deal to 2026. Ah. So that's, that's the little uh, that, interesting that caveat, is tricky. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, um, that is tricky, yeah. And it's, it's just, it's that whole thing of like, well, yes, he needs to get backed, but can he be backed because of the fact that the, the, the uh, allegedly either Chan Siri himself or the club is in about £132 million worth of debt. According to those figures published by Kieran Maguire uh, on X, formerly known as Twitter. As Again, as I said in my viral, video at the time, there's a allegedly. difference between debt and actually an money an owed to the chairman himself. And, yeah, yeah. Um, which we, which we don't, I, I, I can't remember the figures off the top of my head. Go and watch that video. I talk about yes, what the, yes. the estimations of the actual debt are, but a lot of it is money. It's losses and they are different hmm. to debt. Losses are yes. the club. In the eyes of the EFL, losses are just as bad. Yes. Because we're losing yes. money, even if the chairman isn't expecting that money back. Do you get me? Mm. Yeah. Um, I just want to put this section in because we're talking about Ugbo. If you've got Ugbo on EFC right now and you want to make him a half decent card with the potential of upgrades, right? Just because there's some Wesley fans, and I know, I know not everybody's doing it, he fits into two of the currently active evolutions on EFC. So you can make him a 78 rated card, but with potential of future upgrades. Shut up, Jack. Shut your mouth. Um, he could currently go into pick it up, which takes him to a 74 rated striker, and then 78, uh, a generous goal scorer, which turns into a 78 rated striker. And I have got to say, I've been using him, and he's very good. And that's why I mentioned it, because if you're building a Wednesday Evo team, I generally enjoy using Iki Ugbo. And if you still got your founders, you won't have your founders, but you could technically get him to an 82 right now with 92 pace. Mm. But the, at the minute, you can get him with ping pass, one play style plus, 89 pace, 72 shooting, 68 passing, 70 dribbling, 31 defending, and 72 physical. What excites me about that is that is not a great stats, which means you've got him at a 78 overall. He is going to fit into another Evo and you'll probably make him mid 80s. What do you want to say, Jack? Because you were laughing all the way through that. Well, I, I actually muted myself so that the, so that the podcast yes. didn't get the laughing fit of mine. Uh, <laughs> I was just chuckling because I was like, of course it's going on to FIFA. So when's the, uh, when's the next career mode episode, by the way, Jax? Like, when, when's, well, the first one didn't take enough traction, the oh, player yeah. career, so yeah, I, sacked yeah. okay. I sacked it. I sacked it. I've said okay. this all the way through. If people aren't invested in a series, I will sack it off. Um, okay. Not throwing okay. the toys out the pram, but purely because... yes. I made a couple of episodes and it was going to take a lot of work to make the next ones and it didn't pick up. Uh, so I'm probably sacking that okay. one off. I am doing some stuff with the other thing. I'm currently debating. You see, now we've, we've, we're in different spaces. My system's not up here to mm. record gaming content. It's where oh, I course, want to yeah. sit and relax. You know what I mean? And right. it's not where I want yeah. to bring cameras and, and things like that. So I'm in the stasis of, do I buy another system like a Series S or something mm. and have it up here and, you know, do it like that? Do I? Because I just don't want to move it all the time because it's, it's not good for the consoles when you're moving it to and from. So yeah. um, I'm debating it. Fair, I've got loads of content ideas yeah. and the next FIFA, I'm going to hit that hard. So if you are a fan of that stuff and you've come to the podcast from that, I have got so many plans for the next FIFA that, is going to be from day one like we used to. But for yeah. now, I am going to do something on 
this, but it's um, for one, it's just missed the it's missed the momentum, so it's, they're not going to do yeah. as well, which affects just affects the channel in general. Um, but yes, I mean one one idea that you may have already thought of, I don't know, but every a lot of episodes you actually talk about the evolution of players in the in the ultimate. Yeah, let's game. not talk why about not, ideas. Why not do and anyway, yes, if you want yes. to see stuff. Put it in the comments <laughs> below, because engagement, and that will make the podcast episode go further. So there we go. Anyway, yes. yes. Um, the, the, there might be something involving that that, that, gets, that gets done, Jack, basically, uh, yes. as well. Okay. So, um, yes, there's a, there's a lot of those in the, in, in the line there. But I, what I did want to say, Evo Ikiugbo is really good because he's six foot one, I think. Yeah, um, so, so he's quite I. he's quite useful. <laughs> same age and same bloody height as well. Wow. Oh. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. I just I, I don't I, I either. Let's move Shall on. We talk so about the news, yeah. But anyway, there's not much um, that we want to talk about this week. There's the um, young lad that signed a contract. So I take Bayo signs a professional hours contract. This is from the Wednesday website. Young defender Gabriel Arctobeo has signed his first professional contract with Wednesday following a successful trial period. The centre-back has featured in recent games for the Owls under-21s and now pens a permanent deal at Hillsborough. Previously with Burnley's Academy, the 19-year-old was delighted following his S6 switch. Arctobeo said, I'm very pleased, very, very pleased to sign my first professional deal. It's been a long time coming and I'm over the moon. It's been a tough journey, but I kept working on it and it's an overwhelming feeling. Once I came here to Sheffield Wednesday, all the lads made me feel very welcome and it just felt right. The way we play it and the standards here, I loved it straight away. I'm a ball-playing centre-back. I like to play passes long and short and I love to get stuck in. I've played a couple of games already and I've really enjoyed it. I need to keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully push on from there. Owls Academy manager Stephen Haslam added, We're delighted for Gabriel. Is it Gabriel or Gabriel? One of those. He's on. He's been those. on trial for a... No- he didn't say that. That was me questioning. Back to the quote. He's yes, been on trial yes. for a number of games now, and he's earned the opportunity to stay with us for a longer period. He's got the physical attributes as a centre half. He's an imposing figure. He talks well as an organizer in the back line. He's got a good mobility, and he's shown us that he can handle the ball as well. He's been impressive. He's played in a back three and back four. He's shown versatility. We've got a busy period now, which is really good, and the players will experience what it's like to be a first ter- team player when you're playing a three game week rather than just at the weekend. It'll be a valuable learning curve and a good experience for the boys over the next 12 weeks or so with a lot of games. So, good. Good to see the academy um, carrying on with these players. We've, we've obviously seen some academy products such as Kadamatri come through. We could do with a couple of defenders coming through and actually cementing in the team because they never quite make it, the defenders. Um, yes. So, so I hope they do. Um, bit of an interesting one in Will Vokes press conference. He was talking about how... Uh, he nearly signed for Wednesday back in the day. That never happened. Oh. How that had have been interesting before he went to Cardiff. Did you, uh, oh, so did, this did was you see this? Back in the, the Chancery era, I guess. If it yeah, was, yeah. If it was signed yeah, yeah. for, yeah, wow. Interesting. It was going to be, it this, was going to be him and Bannon quite, in the midfield. Yeah. That was the plan, apparently. Oh, wow. That could have worked. That could have, yeah. Yeah. I mean, considering how injury-prone Sam Hutchinson always was, that could have worked really well. And, you know, instead of Will Volks, we ended up with David Jones, and that really worked very well, didn't it? We spent a a lot of money on bang average players. With the amount of money we had, I shouldn't have been going, who is this player? Who is this in the English system? You know, like, I understand the players from abroad that I'm not familiar with, but I'm just like... I'll be honest, my ball knowledge is not amazing now. If, and I hate that term because people throw it around stupidly, but it's mm. a term now, apparently. My ball knowledge, my footballing knowledge wasn't yes. fantastic back at that time. It was very, it's still quite reactionary, but back then it was like, I, I was the FIFA kid. But now it's one of those things that grow up, don't you? And you look at a lot more and you, you analyze it. Well, you talk about this for a long time. You uh, you pick up a lot more, and I think what a I mean, lot of people you, don't know. Have you grown up, James? <laughs> Jack just said something I've cut out because he yes. uh, left a pregnant pause in a sentence in the wrong place. <laughs> in the wrong place. In very much in the wrong place. 
And I'm sorry, but I can't leave that in because even though it was funny, <laughs> dear me. Um, if you want to um, see it, then uh, check out Talking Wednesday Extra on the membership tier. I still need to uh, actually edit through that one. Oh, I hope I've still got it on this machine. The one that you and Jake did. Um, it needs to go up, actually. Oh, I'll try yeah. and do that today. Um, Can I just say, so, this, is, this, is, this is to highlight the delay that James and I have today. You're now on my screen. You're now putting your head in your hands in slow motion and laughing at it. Uh, so that, that's just oh, highlighting... That's highlighting again that we're not being rude to each other and cutting in, into each other's sentences. It's literally just that much of a delay. So apologies I don't know why it, it, it's you. It, I don't have it with yeah. Jake. I don't know why it's when I talk to you. Uh, there's just like um, no idea. It's probably because Jake's <laughs> internet's better and then it works. Oh yeah, I know that was bad. We need to carry on. Um, we need to carry on. <laughs> what what we were talking about is talking about football Walmart's knowledge and growing up back in the day and those and yes and, he did yes. Um, you'll notice as you go to more matches that you 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 analyse things different when you watch players off the ball that are not always yes. on camera things like that um, and that's a big part of it that um, you need in your in your analysis, I think, as well, in your overall analysis when you're thinking about things. It's quite actually easy to do it, even with some of the angles they give you now, if you were to to, to look at, at all the footage. But obviously, usually, if you're watching like a broadcast, they'll zoom in and you won't see all the angles. But yeah, that's, what, that's obviously what analysis on big TV programs and stuff do. They've got all the angles, so they'll look at players off the ball and things like that. Yes. But moving on, like, the, the, we're not going to talk about too much this week because again i'm streaming twice um mm. we might even do an all person uh, and a live podcast on friday in place of next week's episode um so it might be a case if you get two podcasts this week and then there isn't one on tuesday next week we'll see how that one goes we, we might put an extra in its place or something like that but sheffield wednesday obviously do play plymouth it's a must-win game jack they are it is indeed 16th they've got f- They've got 40 points. Their record's 10 wins, 10 draws, 15 losses. Their home record's 28 points. Their away record is poor at 12 points. We need to take advantage of the fact we're at home, and they have got that record. Their last match was a loss 2-0 to Ipswich Town. We need to turn the screws on this one, get the three points. We don't get the three yes. points. We start slipping again, in my opinion. We need, to channel our, channel our, we need to channel our inner screwdrivers and uh, turn the screws, I agree. Yes. Uh, and also, just a side note, and then on Friday, at the start of the whole um, podcast, oh, uh, Jake and I will be at this game. So if you do see uh, Jake and me, myself, feel free to come and say hello. You know, we don't like, we're, we're friendly people. So come and say hi if you, if you see uh, Jake and myself hanging around anywhere in the stadium and whatnot. It'll be nice to I wasn't invited. see people. Well, you were doing a live stream anyway. And it was very last minute. It was like, well, I am now. All right. Why it not? wasn't very last minute, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't very last minute. I'm, I'm because just, they told me this. Just... Because you, 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 you're trying to dig your way out of this hole. Because they told me about this nearly a month ago. <laughs> so, yes, well, they're you, bad I, friends. I, yes. There you go. We're, we're, we're going to the game. Feel free to say hello if, uh, if you see us. It's all right. All right. I invited Jake to all the stuff if, that you and me went to. Yeah. I said, I'll even drive us all. But neither of you went, oh, you went, oh, we're just going to go to that one. Neither of you went, oh, James, would you like to come? It'd be a nice thing. <laughs> but there we I go. Mean, to be fair, I know where I stand. Tickets, there's still loads of tickets left. By the way, do you remember I put a tweet out saying that we're looking for new people to contribute to Talkie Wednesday? <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yes, it's just coming back round to be James. relevant now. That, that, yes. just, uh, that might become more relevant now. <laughs> <laughs> We're now looking for two new people to, uh, <laughs> to help to add to the team. Anyway. Uh, anyway. To be fair, as I said, <laughs> I said, I said I would have had to politely decline anyway because I am literally yeah, working exactly. till late. Yeah, exactly. Failed to mention that bit, didn't you just then, James, with your, with your full-on rant about how, how we're terrible people? It's the intention. It's, it's like, yes. right, it's <laughs> like if you've got a friend group <laughs> and they go, out for, they go out for drinks 
and you're mm. just like one of the couple that aren't going. But at least if they invite you out, and even though if they know you're going to say no, you still feel like, all right, then, fair enough. Yeah. But if yeah. They're, they're just like, <laughs> Ditch you. You're like, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I can't wait for it to yes, get no, I'm, I'm, the comments what a terrible person I am. And we are. It's, and, it's, oh, it's dreadful. Well, I was, I, I'm working great. till late. I'm working till late a lot of the week. Yes. So it's okay. So it's fine. It's fine, Jack. Anyway. We play Leeds on uh, Friday. Um, we play Leeds on Friday, yes. And I'll be too emotionally damaged from my friendships in tatters to actually go to this one as well. No. Uh, I'll I'll be um I'll be streaming that one as well, basically, because but I'll probably be yes. very tired because it'll be the end of a week where I'm working quite a few uh, longer hours. So it's a case of we'll rock up on stream, we'll do the dexterity watch. One might be a talking Wednesday live, I've said, but let us know. Leeds is in the actual terms of what it could be. It's a throw of the dice, this one, isn't it? Because they are obviously a very good side. They're a Premier League side. Yes. And um, us getting a point from this would be amazing. I agree. I agree. I mean, we, it's, it's, yes, it's a must-win game, but it's a unlikely must-win game, you know? Everything's a, everything uh, is a must-win game, a, but this, yeah. what, this, this is one where if we lose it, you understand, even though it's still going to put yeah. us in bother. There still will you know. be people granted that will be like, oh, we're not good enough. Sack the manager. Like, no. The, 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 I don't the think they will be because I think they'll, have, they'll be in the cave by that point if they're actually saying yeah. that after that. After True. the run we've been on, the way we've turned it around, we're grinding out results against teams we should be grinding out results against. You know, we didn't, we should have battered Rotherham going off the stats yeah. and going off the chances we had, but we still managed to get the win. And that's the important thing, getting the results down now. I like how he's changed it and he can go more direct with mm. team with stuff. And he talks about changing it and going a bit more route one, a bit more direct. And you have to go at players a little bit more and you can't always play in this style. He's got his philosophy and how he wants to play football, but he's bloody adapted it. He's got a plan B yeah. already. And we were screaming yep. for that with Darren Moore. Do you remember? Yep. Yep. And there was no plan B. It was just more of plan A, but in a different, slightly different way with Darren Moore, I guess. And, uh, it was whatever the hell Cisco, again, I, that whole time period, I don't even know what the hell the identity of Wednesday even was under, under Cisco, but we've actually got a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. It's great. And we could even just make up a plan D on the spot, if, if needs be, it seems. So it's, it's glorious. We actually, there is a, oh my God, it's so nice. No, we've got a no, he's a terrible manager. Nobody would ever want him at their yeah. club. Ever. He's the worst. He brings in the worst players. He cheers. Too, you just... know what? He cheers too much at the end of games when we win. That's, all, that's his all problem. All Ugbo does. All Ugbo does is score goals. And who wants that from a striker? He doesn't yeah, do anything all else. All Ugbo does is score goals. You don't goals. need to all bother. All does is skin players and looks confident <laughs> when he does it. That's all he Troy does. Troyes, give, him, give him us for like a million and we'll be doing you a favour. All right? We'll be doing you a favour. Every other club stay away from Danny Roll. Well, Pervader's out of contract, so oh, he can well. come to us for free. You don't even need to yeah, worry exactly. about it. You get exactly. him off your books for free. Yes. Well, the, you know the thing is, you know the thing that has just clicked in my brain and I forgot about this? He can't play against Leeds. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Although, uh, interestingly enough, just sticking with what we were just saying in a takey way, um, that's genuinely what Cardiff fans were saying to a lot of us on social media. All he does is score goals. That's why I said it. And it was just... It's <laughs> that's just, why I said it. No, I know, but it's just, it's just really funny. Like, why would you not... Oh, anyway, yeah, uh, Perveda can't play against Leeds, damn it. But I sort of slightly feel... Like we might have been going more defensive against them anyway, and I sort of feel like Volks and well, I again, don't, I don't know if you'll mm. just try and play them at their own game. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, I, that's all I have got this week for this week's episode yes. of Talking Wednesday. Jack, uh, have you got anything to add? Just, just keep looking after yourselves and and make sure you say hello if you'd see me and Jake at, at the game against Plymouth, and just. Hope you're all keeping well, really, you know? That's that's all I have to say. I, guess. I want you to go up to them and go, why didn't you invite Dex? 
and make them feel terrible. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, and then we just start laughing in your face. That'll, that, that'll be that'll be even funnier. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also why you won't be seeing Jake and myself in in the the live stream chat. You know, because we're not armchair fans. Oh, that's a joke, by the Did way. Did you actually just say that? Armchair. You? It's because, no, yeah, I know, I know it is. But, but the fact that you even just... said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> oh, anyway, that's all I have to say for now. <laughs> Take care, guys, and we will see you in the next episode of Talking Wednesday. Yes. Au revoir. Thank <laughs> you.